at the De La War Laboratories, the photo thought machines. Are you visualising intensely or is it all a foggy mess? One of the quickest ways to bring out the magic in your mind and to obtain anything you set your heart on is to practice visualising what you want. Nothing but good can come from visualisation if you are positive in your desires. The things you want to will come automatically. As you progress you will find a gradual transformation taking place in your life. When you are out on a sunny day and you see a stream of cars going by, do you begin to say to yourself, how on earth do they get those beautiful cars? You haven't seen a really old one pass by. Well, you can have a luxurious car. You are entitled to one. You can have the best. If you really want a car and you command your subconscious positively, you can get it. For the subconscious can do anything you want it to do, within the confines of the material plane, of course. The first step is knowing what you want, exactly what and when. You want a car, but do you want an old Austin or a brand new Cadillac? Perhaps it's a Jaguar or a Mercedes you want. Be specific. Tell your subconscious in so many words exactly the make and type of car you want, and when you want it. The new Jaguar isn't going to do you much good when you are on your deathbed. Make it clear what you want and when. Although, leaving it up to the universe's timeline, knowing and trusting it's on its way is the best option because it takes the stress of time constraints off you. You wouldn't ask for a new Mercedes in five minutes because your intellect would say there's no hope of me getting such a car in five minutes and you wouldn't get it. Be reasonable. Give a sensible time limit. Fair enough. Now the thing is, you may be absolutely unable to see how on earth you could get a new Mercedes on what you were earning at the moment, but other factors come into play. You may get a sudden windfall. You may hit the jackpot in some exciting competition. If you do the lottery, possibly it's your turn for the big money. Don't draw lines between the possible and the impossible. Impossible broken up means I'm possible. I am of the universe and all things are possible. From the film The Gambler with Mark Wahlberg and John Goodman. Leave it to your subconscious to get it for you in its own magical way by command of your will. You do not know where you can get it from. You do not know where you can put it when you get it. You don't know how you can afford to run it. Oh, ye of little faith, do not worry about that. That is entirely your subconscious mind's business. That is what your subconscious is for, to look after you, to answer your problems. Never for one moment should you limit yourself because you cannot see where such a glorious thing is coming from. Go and look at the cars, especially the Jaguars, if that is what you want and feel joy in your heart. Feeling counts. Feeling is the secret. Feel it already achieved now. Feel good now. When it comes to control of the subconscious mind, feeling plays a very important part. Feel that you can get a Jaguar car when you want it. You are going to enjoy life when you get it. Feel that excitement now. You obtain your desire by feeling as if you had already got what you want now. See yourself at the wheel. See yourself driving that wonderful automobile. There are two outlooks on this. You can see it through your eyes, but a better way some researchers say is see yourself from an independent observer's point outside your body, let's say, and observe you in the car, driving the car. Go 360 around yourself if you want from all the different angles and picture it. Tie around with this, use what works for you. 
So see yourself at the wheel, see yourself driving that wonderful automobile. Use as much senses as you can, smell it, feel the touch, hear the stereo playing, feel the wind with the window down, whatever. See it draw up in front of your house. If you do this, if you see that picture, it is bound to materialize. It is the law. Screwy, that's what he is, screwy. No friend, to create through the magic of visualization, you must hold the picture clearly in your mind, every detail of it. Better still, get yourself a scrapbook and paste in pictures of things you want. Today they call it a dream book or a dream board. Put that Jaguar on the first page. You'll think it's all nonsense, this visualization, right? You've hit it on the head with a hammer. It may be called nonsense, but it may nonetheless be true. For lack of vision, my people perish. How foolish not to believe. What did Arnold Wesker make his character say in I'm talking about Jerusalem? Quote, Dave, don't moan at me about visions. Don't you know they don't work? You child you, visions don't work. Ronnie, they do work. And even if they don't work, then for God's sake, let's try and behave as though they do, or else nothing will work. See what I mean? You have got to see the things you want in your mind's eye, and know that through the power of all creation, the power that powers the whole universe, the power that you own, as everybody owns, is plugged into. The power of your magic, it is coming. Behave as though you believe. If it is a house you want, you have got to see a mental picture. You must see the house, the furniture, the curtains, the cushions, the vase of flowers on the table. You know exactly the house, sort of house you want, and you must see it in every glorious detail. And behave as though you had already got it, as you already own it. It's yours. Claim it. It is yours. Go and buy something for it, however small and inexpensive. But buy something, if it's only a vase to put the flowers in, or a shovel for the fire, or a little duster. Any little thing will do, just to make believe. And it's all about convincing your subconscious mind that you mean business. As Mr. Wesker says, for God's sake behave as though it works, or else nothing will happen. It is the wisdom of the Thai beatings. It is what the saints and sages of the past have studied all their lives. It is no new experiment. It is not merely untried theory. Visualize. See pictures. Use the pineal gland in your brain. Look at the scrapbook every day, your dream book and believe. When some people do not get what they want quickly, they kid themselves. It is all for the best that they should not have it. This is a paralyzing thought. Perhaps they aren't as keen to do things off their own bat as they used to be. TV has made people lazy. Television has made people lose their initiative. They are content to make do. They no longer Feel. All those exciting people on the screen feel for them. That's a major insight back in the 1950s. This is negative and cowardly. There is no rhyme nor reason in it. It's like waiting for the end, like as though you thought there was nothing to live for. Such people stagnate and have a dull, monotonous life. They miss all the luxuries they could so easily have with right thinking. You must want to think so intensely, as Napoleon says, Hill says, a burning desire. You must want to think so intensely, so fiercely, that you feel you cannot live without it. You can ask your subconscious and you can get it if you visualize. I don't care whether it's wealth or health. I do not care whether it is a washing machine or a record player. 
you can ask your subconscious and if you see it and believe it you can get it grasp this fact this tremendous fact that by observing the basic rules of magic you can step into spectacular success and be happier than you have ever dreamed possible your thoughts and words are all powerful but the most powerful thing of all is emotion I'm going to read that again your thoughts and words are all powerful but the most powerful most powerful thing of all is emotion what you see for yourself what you feel feeling is in the heart your whole heart must be in getting this thing you want or it is useless to go on you cannot make magic and all you wish it to bring you a mathematical certainty unless there is a strong feeling there is no haphazard road to the attainment of your desires anyone who tells you there is is leading you down a blind alley you must as you visualize feel your desires will be met so that your subconscious is driven irresistibly to secure these things for you it is not what you do once in a while but what you do habitually every day that counts seeing and feeling are necessities you cannot fool your subconscious it's your right brain hears feels every thought vibration every second of every day from you and it picks up on your doubts if they are predominant the ancient Greeks were undoubtedly some of the best exponents of visualization they were very conscious of seeing of sense of seeing and much of their radiant health and beauty may be attributed to it when a Grecian woman was expecting a child statues of Venus and Apollo were put in her room in the knowledge that the constant mental vision would react upon her physical condition and give her to a child of beauty and other divine qualities. Pause now and reflect on the importance of visualization. Dedicate your whole heart to it. Be in earnest. Practice it each day with exhilarating joy. Be a super optimist and have a daring imagination. You could draw a Rolls Royce from Africa if you wanted. How about that for magic? Magical thinking. No doubt. Just belief. Hold but one pessimistic thought and you will be cut off from the magic you are seeking. Cultivate a strong belief. Be absolutely positive and you will release this wonderful magical power. Be an optimist par excellence. Visualize, visualize at night before retiring. Visualize as you lie in bed. Don't think of failure. If an obstacle looms up, remember Herbert Casson, who said, In a vision I saw a brave man walking briskly with his head up on a rough and twisting path. As I watched him, he gave a shout of drive. Hurrah, he said. Cheerio, I see another obstacle. What a British. Obstacles were as nothing to him. He dismissed them. He laughed at them. Visualize whenever you are alone and quiet and in your retreat room. The little study you made for yourself. You will be guided to a new and wonderful experience. You must repeat over and over again the name of the things you want. Repetition is essential. Tap, tap, tap on your mind. Name it, see it, and tell your subconscious to get it for you. In a friendly manner, commanding, but not so authoritative as to be arrogant. It's in a grateful, commanding, requesting at the same time. What may appear as coincidences are simply workings out of the pattern which you started with your weaving. There was a woman who wanted a piano. She took to test the power of visualization. She did not visualize money with which to buy it, because if she came into money she knew her husband would be annoyed if she spent it on a piano when they were so in need of other things. So she visualized the piano. She made a place in her drawing room and every day when she dusted the furniture she would pretend just for fun to dust her imaginary piano how about that 
She was thrilled and gloriously excited. Hey, the feeling I was telling you about. She put plenty of feeling into the situation. To her, the piano would drop from the skies any day now. After four weeks, a traveller called and asked her if she wanted a piano. He said when he passed the house, he had the idea that somebody wanted a piano. See that? Thought vibrations in the universe work. She laughed and said she did, but she had to let him go because she had no money. Then another piano merchant called a few days following this, and she said to herself joyfully, It must be working. These piano men calling me like this is a sign that my thoughts in the air are taking effect. She grew, grew more and more excited, thrilled, worked up the excitement and worked herself into great excitement. She sang as she did the chores. Life was wonderful, wonderful. Every single day she visualized the piano in the drawing room. She stood up one day in a crowded bus to give her seat to an old lady. They got off the bus together at the same stopping place. They did not know each other, so did not speak. But the old lady dropped her umbrella and the other picked it up and like that they got chatting. Here it is, the old lady said. I suppose you don't happen to know anyone who, wants, who would store a piano, do you? We have got to live abroad for a while and I want to let someone use it for three years in lieu of storage. The one who had been visualising the piano was like one spellbound. The law had worked. She got a wonderful piano for nothing, and at the end of the three years when the old lady came to reclaim it, through the power of the same visualization, she had become rich and was able, well able, to buy herself her own brand new one. If her consciousness had been bigger, she could have had her own new one in the beginning. She realized this later, of course. It was the measure of her bucket. If you want a quart instead of a pint, you have got to enlarge your bucket. If you want a larger salary, you have got to see your pay envelope bulging out. You have to see in your mind's eye before it will operate in that objective 3D world that we see with our eyes. The piano woman conceived the idea that she could store someone's piano. By the law of attraction, the other woman came across her path and made this possible. It would have been greater if she had realized that there are millions of pianos all over the world and that she could easily have a brand new one. She got what she wanted. You must wait patiently while the subconscious is assimilating your desires and goes about it in its own way to bring these things to you. Suddenly, these things you command come as if out of the blue or you will be guided in which way to attain them and the correct course of action will be indicated. You must follow this course immediately and unquestionably. There must be no hesitation on your part, for the subconscious is always right. Always use discernment though. There must be no mental reservation, no deliberation whatsoever. Why do I say use discernment? Because your brain is the most powerful transmitter receiver in the universe. So if your vibration isn't high enough, you can receive misguided and wanted thoughts about our brains and we'll leave it at that but always analyze what the subconscious prompts you to you must act at once only by doing so you will make the subconscious serve you whenever you want to obediently perform the seemingly irrelevant things then soon you will find the thing is yours magic then, when you look back, you will see that the things you were called upon to do by your subconscious all formed the logical line of events, the last one of which is the reward of your dearest dream. There was a man who fell in love with a girl and he wanted to marry her, but she seemed more fond of someone else. Did he give up in despair? No. He continually visualized himself going up to that girl and placing a ring upon her finger. And then the day came along when the mental picture was shown on the screen of his life his wildest dream came true through the power which brings magic. I have another discretionary addition here. If that girl didn't want him, you also have the, uni the option that the universe 
has something better. If she doesn't want you, next. Thank you very much. That is my best hat. I won't wear it today. And this is my best suit. I must not put that on now. Why not? Because you are limiting yourself. And you are thinking that it will be soiled and weared out. And you cannot have another yet, one yet for a while. If you could actually see, if you could actually visualize where another hat is coming from next week or in a fortnight's time, you would dress in all your glory today and be happy about it. But you cannot see. That is the pity of it. You lack vision. Wear your best clothes now and know that you are going to get plenty more new things very soon. Know what sort you want, the color, the texture. Visualize it in your head. Before you know where you are, you will get it. You will be, it will be yours. How? That is the business of your subconscious. Slash superconscious. Slash universe. It is not for you to worry. When a destructive thought creeps in, telling you what a fool you are, that all this is nonsense, say quickly, get out of here. You are not going to find a place in my mind. Say cancel, cancel. When you see your wallet as flat as though an elephant had sat on it, that is the doubts creeping in. You are seeing double, you are seeing bad, you are seeing a lie. Speak with authority and say, get thou behind me, get out of here. Blessed is the emptiness, for it shall be filled. See it filled. It is visualization that creates through the power of the mind. Every poor condition has been brought on this way. You had to conceive the idea or it would never have been. You had to see yourself poor and think of yourself as being poor and feel the fear of being poor or you never would have been poor. You had to speak of poverty or you would never have been empty handed. The subconscious creates what you give it. If your idea, feeling, fear is poverty and you think, feel, fear poverty, then you cannot work magic. No power on earth can make you rich if you hold such thoughts. These burnable fancies reach the field. As in, your fearful doubts, you won't have the money for the next bills, reach the field universal. And it is done according to your belief and faith. No power on earth can make you rich if you hold such fearful thoughts of poverty, lack, etc. And through the law of attraction you draw all others in the same miserable condition. Is it worth it? All these depressed conditions for the sake of thinking wrongly? Because you will play the silly game your friends and neighbours are playing, your peers and co-workers. It is not just as easy is it not just as easy to think, I am rich? It takes no more energy, no more time to think like that and look at the difference. Look what you get. You get riches by the magic in your mind. I have to interject here again is, it takes no more energy, no more time to think like that. It's just as easy to think I am rich. But if for 10 or 20 years you have predominant black ball of energy, as they say, of poverty. You have to overcome that black mass burned into the neural pathways of your brain. EFT therapy, tapping, there are various ways of releasing these blockages energetically. The aimprogram.com focuslifeforceenergy.net EFT, all freely available on the internet. To look up these things, YouTube, etc. However, you have got to know what you want. What do you want in this world? Most people have no real idea what they want. They are like children in a toy shop who clutch first at one thing and then drop it for another with brighter and more alluring colours and throw that away for something else until, at long last, they come empty-handed out of the shop. 
Then they blame fate when they ought to be blaming themselves. Always accept 100 responsibility for everything in your own life. Blaming others, the governments, the climate, the weather. You give away your power. You become a victim. You must know exactly what you want. See it in your mind's eye exactly the thing you need. Think of it constantly. Say the word. Then all you have got to do is to watch it turn up by magic. If you invite better conditions that are bound, they are bound to come. You do not have to think things are impossible. You have to think that better days are on the way. Better days simply are on the way if you command your subconscious positively. And be grateful. Gratitude is a very high vibration. Be grateful for what you already have. Don't resent anything. Don't be peeved if life is not just as you want it. Gratitude for what you already have is vital. Bless your present condition. When you have conquered your environment, when you have not dropped your hat and run, then life will be grand, sweet, sung, and magic will manifest quickly. Decide to be courageous. Cultivate a tolerance, a quietness, a resilience, a sort of sparkling expectedness about things. The glass is always half full. We always choose our reaction, no matter what happens to us. You always have a choice how to react. This is the way you should live. If you want to bring magic into your life, it is very easy for us to think we can get along on our own, that meditation is not necessary, that it is enough just to repeat what you want. We may for a short time be able to run under our own steam, but eventually we slow down, form negative habits, Hang around people with lower vibrations who kill and smother our dreams and goals. We become aged and alone and no better, no richer, lukewarm than we were years ago. Meditation, listening, listening in and speaking to your subconscious is more than a two-way conversation. It establishes a magnetic power line between you and the divine, between you and the universe, between you and your subconscious. And your subconscious aligns with the universe, the superconscious, the field. All is one. So meditation, listening in and speaking to your subconscious talking things over with your subconscious, is more than a two-way conversation. It establishes a magnetic power line between you and your subconscious. It gives energy and provides your dearest needs. You shouldn't have to wait for poverty and disaster to open yourself up to this wonderful day. Whatever, <coughs> excuse me, whatever conditions you live under, unhappy or happy, Take your wants on to another dimension. Be happy now. Magic cannot pierce a fog. You must be bright. Show enthusiasm, a feeling of expectancy. If you think it is impossible to get what you want, you automatically weaken your power and you weaken what you already possess. The Bible refers to this when it says, even that which they, which they have shall be taken away. It is strange but it is true and it should be underlined ten times. You must accept what you already have with gratitude. Think and work with a song in your heart. A child sees no difficulty in magic. A child has no difficulty whatever in visualization. He will put a box over his head with holes in it for eyes and a mouth and he sees himself as a spaceman. A soapbox on wheels becomes a racing car as he speeds along the road. It is only when we grow up that we lose this enlightenment, this acceptance of the impossible, this magical 
childlike outlook on everything. Everything is enchanted. Unless you become as a little child, isn't that what we are meant to do? You may live in a caravan, but you are irritable when you have to go and draw water a little way up the field, when you have to shop for food and carry heavy parcels, when you have to get in more coal for the fire. You do not accept the path you were on, and if you keep on resenting things, you will cloud out all magnetic power to work magic. You must raise your thinking to higher dimensions. Here comes the vibra vibration and frequency. Raise your frequency, exact same thing. You must raise your thinking and feelings to higher dimensions. You must be grateful. Our magic has no power to manifest. Even be grateful for the pissed off situation you were in and use it. Use the anger, the disappointment to spur you on to do whatever it takes to get what you want, to be who you desire, to achieve your long lost goals. You don't need to bother whether you have much money or not, whether you are rich or poor, whether your body aches all over or whether it does not. Do away with this smallnessness of mind, all this littleness of living, and realize that you are on your way to higher dimensions right now. That is all that matters in the world of making magic. All that matters is where you're going, not where you've been. All that matters is who you are becoming, not who you are or who you are. See? See the power of our choice? The power of now? Every second of every day. You are the vital watchman at the gate. Every second. The power you can unleash. Enter a very deep and rich silence, and whatever you possess at the moment, accept it wholeheartedly. Give thanks. Thanks to the creator of all things, which is beyond all good and evil, but the source of everything. Everything is consciousness. Everything is energy. There is no place that is not. As I always say, If God is in heaven, and if God is everywhere, God is also in hell. See? Give thanks. Once you accept it, the condition will commence to change for the better, because you will be reaching out to higher dimensions than the one in which you now live. How can your subconscious communicate when your mind is so turbulently ungrateful. Put yourself in a state of magnetic power. Every moment you live in gratitude, you are actually becoming a fourth dimensional being. Now that's, that's extremely insightful for 1950s writing. Every moment you live in gratitude, you are actually becoming a fourth dimensional being. And this is very apt in 2015. They talk about fourth and fifth dimensional earth. And once this begins to operate, magic takes place. Non locality, no time space, fourth, fifth, sixth, and higher dimensions. This is exciting. This is how you should always feel. Remember, you can go through life adoring, accepting, approving, enjoying, or you can go through life perpetually grumbling bitching, whining and moaning, complaining. Get rid of ingratitude and resentment, then magic will flow. Einstein said, and I love his quote, two ways of looking at life. You can look at life as if nothing is a miracle, or you can look on life as if everything is a miracle, as if everything is enchanted. Tell yourself that nothing in the world will stop you. It is necessary to tell yourself this and believe it. That's the resilience, that's the attitude, unstoppable, nothing, 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 nothing is ever going to get in your way. Indomitable spirit as the martial arts teaches, and perseverance, never wanting to give up. You see, the sooner your subconscious gets the idea that you want to change, the better, and the sooner your desires begin to take form, hold the picture in your mind's eye. 
visualize yourself as being grateful and happy. The mirror technique can do this. Actually, the mirror technique is talked about in a great book by Claude A. Bristol, written in the 1920s as well, The Magic of Believing. There's a whole chapter, I think, on the mirror technique. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself in the mirror and command your subconscious. See yourself as a smiling, grateful person. The mirror technique intensifies your thoughts. Thousands of years ago, men talked to the mirrored face in a pool of water. Where before you could lose your temper and it didn't matter very much, now it does begin to matter. You are wanting to work magic and you are wanting to reach at the fourth dimension. When magic becomes a reality, you must intensify your drawing power, increase your magnetism, and you can only do this by purification, i.e. raising your vibration. By loving instead of hating, by not losing your temper, by unselfishness, by meditation, by giving. You must discipline your lower self, your animal basic instincts, and you must not now think of some of these things that you used to think. You must withdraw from life to a certain extent as you once knew it. Be in the world, but not of it. You must concern yourself with things of the mind and strive for protection of behavior so that you can raise the mind at will to a higher dimension. Yeah, we are all very familiar with higher dimensions. Julian Jaynes, Nobel laureate, wrote about the brains. When they get overwhelmed, like traffic systems, they either crash or spontaneously evolve to an X more highly organized evolution operating system. Higher dimensions could be another way of looking at it, yes. Do not be locked into the physical body because like this you block your channels of abundance. If you don't visualize what you want, you are merely holding on to the old negative beliefs. Old might not get ideas which kill any chance of magic. When you start to worry and doubt whether you will get the car or not, or whatever it is you are visualizing, you block your channel. Let your subconscious work. You have planted the seed, so do not dig it up, let it grow. And the best way is to stop worrying, stop caring. To get, you have got to forget. It's like a great story a good friend of mine tells of the bamboo. The bamboo. You know, do they give nine years growing underground and in the last nine months they give all their growth growing where they give years underground where you think nothing was happening as soon as you cease anxious caring you open the way for your subconscious to work magic as you think so does your subconscious work by living a life of resentment ingratitude dissatisfaction jealousy and so on your aura becomes denser and denser until there is a blockage. Your vibration or your aura becomes denser and denser, creating energy blockages where diseases take form and your immune system weaken by the minute. You can no longer attract. When you catch yourself thinking negative toxic thoughts, immediately talk to yourself, take charge. And as another good friend of mine wrote, Thought, discipline, control. Discipline, thought and control. So when you catch yourself thinking negative toxic thoughts, immediately talk to yourself. You are destroying your body. You are emptying your purse. Raise yourself up from the dead, from dead thoughts, dead ideas, and ask your subconscious to forgive you for misappropriating its wonderful power. Here you can also use the Hopona Ono technique which is basically you just say to the universe or whatever, your subconscious mind, whatever you believe, you say for any situation you're in, to bless it, you say, thank you, I love you, I apologize, please forgive me. Keep saying that over and over again. And mental patients in hospital have been 100% cured from that technique, even though it was from an 
an independent person doing the technique on them without their knowledge even. Powerful. You have the power within you to work magic, but you automatically shut yourself off from this power because you are lukewarm. You are asleep at the switch. You are out of your kingdom and the kingdom of heaven is within. You have deliberately thrown yourself out. See, the power always lies with you. 100% you, you, you. Every single moment you are choosing what you are going to be. If you serve sickness, you are going to be ill. If you fear sickness, you are going to be ill. If you serve poverty and fear poverty, you are going to be poor. If you serve health, you are going to be well. If you serve riches, abundance and prosperity, you are going to be wealthy. If you serve only the physical, you will never get to the other departments of your mind and you will never reach the fourth dimension, the mind that works magic. For while serving only the physical, you are bound to the law of cause and effect. For everything you do which is not right, you will have to suffer, because that is the law. Violation of the law causes misery and suffering, and that is why we have other planes of thought, higher vibrations of frequency available to us. It's up to us to do the work on ourselves to reach them levels, so that we can choose and be free. You have got to go beyond the human consciousness to know the way to work magic. Remember, I heard someone very important say one time, there are nine groups of DNA in the human species. Nine. So, there's plenty of room to always improve our vibrations, isn't there? People who say they are poor are ill, downright ill. They might as well dig a hole in the back garden and get in it, for they are dead already. They go on struggling and struggling and grumbling and grumbling. There is a deal too much of it going on in the world and I expect there were such people present at the miracle of the loaves and fishes who complained that the bread was stale and the fish was not very nice. Accept what you have to eat and drink with gratitude. Accept your environment and how you have to live Visualize the better things you would like to eat and drink. Visualize the wine on the table. Visualize a nice new home and all the luxuries you want to put in it. Visualize the Jaguar, Mercedes, whatever car, the motor yacht, everything you desire. But do not complain. Don't ever complain. This is the thing that will stop you getting it. Before any magician works magic, he says Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Speak the blessing. You can say to the universe, Thank you for the magnificent outcome of this, whatever situation or you want. And feel the gratitude and the knowledge that it will all be fine. All is well. Bless every condition you are in. Bless what you already have. Then you can work magic, my friend. Do I visualize? Of course I do. Before every performance, I visualize people hailing taxis, leaping on buses, getting their car out of the, out of the garage, all speeding their way to the theater where I am to appear. I see people ringing up the book seats, ringing up the book seats, at queues at the booking office everywhere, People, 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 all coming to my show. I always play to packed houses. I believe that what I see for myself, I get. And in like fashion, I see people falling over each other in the foyer, waiting to buy this book. I see them going into the bookshops, picking it up off the counter, and handing over the money at the cash desk. I see them spending. I see them sending to my publisher for a copy. Everywhere I look, in my mind's eye, I see people clamouring to read what I've written and then coming to see my performances not once, but again and again. Certainly, I visualise. Wouldn't you?